All right, everyone. Um, welcome to Chapter 5, Inter-VLAN Routing. Um, this video won't be as long as the others. It'll be relatively short compared to them. Because um, the, there's only three little concepts, and, and once you get those, you're kind of good. So we're going to talk about Inter-VLAN Routing. Remember, after you've set up multiple VLANs on a switch, those VLANs cannot talk to each other without a router present. Um, so we're going to talk about different ways to set up the router. Then we're going to talk about troubleshooting, a little bit about layer 3 switches, and then we're good. All right, enter VLAN routing. So again, if I've got this switch here, and he's got VLAN 10 and VLAN 30, these two PCs can't talk to each other through the switch, because the VLANs deny them access. So they have to go to a router, and then that kind of through, in order to communicate with each other. So remember, anytime you, as soon as you implement VLANs, you have to have a router um, to distinguish between the VLANs and route traffic between VLANs. So, way back in the early days we had legacy inter-VLAN routing. And what happened was, you know, basically for every VLAN we had, we had a physical um, interface on that router. Oops, sorry about that, Drew walked in and I totally lost my place. So anyway, back in the old days, when you had to do inter-VLAN routing, they bought, a, they bought router and they bought an interface for every VLAN. So if you had five VLANs, you had to have five router interfaces. Um, obviously it was expensive, um, uh, but on the plus side, then every VLAN had full, you know, had a full pipe, I guess, to, to transmit through. So I guess that was good in that respect, but again, it was expensive, it was complicated to set up, uh, that kind of thing. So today what we typically do is router on a stick. And what router on a stick means is we have one interface that routes between all the different VLANs. And what we do is we create sub-interfaces on that router. So we'll say, hey, this physical interface, FA00, is going to have FA00.1, 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0.4. And then point one is going to route the traffic for VLAN one. Point two is going to route the traffic for VLAN two. But so so we take the one physical interface and we split it up into a whole bunch of virtual interfaces. And each virtual interface is in charge of one VLAN. If that helps. Um, so again, I only have to have one physical card. So again, we call that router on a stick. And again, it's very popular. Um, when you take the voice over IP class, uh, you set this up because it's very popular for uh, voice over IP. Uh, because remember, your, your PC and your phone are on your desk, and they're both plugged in to you know to the same uh, NIC card, uh, which goes to the same switch that has to go out. So uh, to save money, we typically do router on a stick. Now, the third way, and this is the ultimate way if you can afford it, is to have a multi-layer switch. Remember, a multi-layer switch is a switch that does switching and routing together. So we typically call it a layer three switch, uh, but in this chapter they call it a multi-layer switch. So you can make a switch port a routed port for a VLAN, or you can make it a switch port. So, but problem is these uh, multi-layer switches are relatively expensive. You know, you're not getting one for under a thousand dollars, where you can get a you know a 2960 bottom of the line switch you know for a couple hundred bucks. So, um, obviously, it increases the cost dramatically. All right. So configuring uh, legacy inter VLAN routing, and again, um, I don't know anybody that, that's running stuff like this, but there's always a chance that you may run into uh, an, uh, an organization that's that's been out there for a while um, and is still using very old equipment, um, and they have their setup like this. So again, you buy a router, and if I got 12 VLANs, I need to have 12 interfaces on that router, um, or have several routers, you know, two routers with six interfaces each, something like that. And then basically, what I do is I configure the IP address of each interface um, to be on the same network as that um, VLAN. And then each VLAN, like uh, the PCs in that VLAN, their default subnet masks go to that interface. So again, I got two VLANs, I got two uh, ports on my card, so this PC that's in 17.10 would point to 17.1 as his default gateway. This PC that's on 17.30 would point to 17.30.1 on this NIC card. So then his traffic would go all the way up through the router, all the way back down, and boom. Um, so again, that's that's the legacy method. So to configure that, you know, I go to VLAN 10, enter, VLAN 20, boom, I've created the two v the VLANs. And then I go to the interface, FA11, switch port access, so I make it an access port, or I'm sorry, um, it's already an access port, I'm going to assign it to VLAN 10, then I go to access, or port 4, make him part of VLAN 10, port 6 and port 5, and then make them ports uh, 30, 
and I'm all set. Now remember, your switch here has to have two ports in VUN 10 and two ports in VUN 30. This port um, and this port down here. So this port has to be in VUN 10. This port has to be in VUN 10. So he needs two ports in VUN 10. He needs two ports in VUN 30. So that's why here they make in, um, you know, ingress, egress, ingress, egress, uh, however you want to say it. Uh, and there, and that's all there is to it on the switch. But then from the router, you know, he would go to this interface and he put this IP address. And then he go to this interface, put this IP address, and he's all good. So again, the legacy stuff uh, is relatively easy. It's just very expensive because you got to buy physical interfaces. It gets kind of complicated because now you have to have you got to get routers that have more slots for WIC cards, that kind of thing. All right. So the alternative router on a stick. We're going to do one physical interface, and that one physical interface is going to have multiple virtual interfaces. We're going to split that interface up um, into you know different virtual interfaces. Now again, the, one of the bad sides or the downsides to this is now you've got all these VLANs hitting you on a, let's say, a 100 megabit port, and that 100 megabit port is now split between four different VLANs. So it is possible to, I guess, um, have to throttle that down because everybody won't be able to act or communicate at their full speed, if that kind of helps. So you can't do this where you have only one port and it's on a 100 megabit port, but you've got a 48 port switch where you've got 48 people all on different VLANs all trying to use that same port. So kind of keep that in mind. So here's the switch configuration. Remember, I only got one port. So he still points, you know, um, he goes into VUN 10, he goes into VUN 30. But this port here no longer becomes an access port. It now becomes a trunk port. Because remember, an access port can only have traffic from one VUN. So this, these, these two ports here, 11 and 6, need to be switch port mode access. But this port here, between the router and the switch, has to have traffic from VUN 10 and VUN 20. So he has to be a trunk. Remember, an access port can only carry traffic from one VUN. A trunk port can carry traffic from all VUNs or specific VUNs that you specify. So in this case, we're going to specify VUN 10 and VUN 30. So how to set that up? Um, on the switch, I'm sorry, this is the router. So you have to go to the router. So I go to the physical, or I'm sorry, I go to the sub interface, interface 10, and I create it, you know, inter or interface, you know, gigabit 00.10. Now, in our labs, we typically have the sub interface number as the, the same number as the VLAN. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm having a hard time getting that out. So obviously, this is going to go to VLAN 10, so I'm going to name it sub interface.10. Then we have to set up the encapsulation, so encapsulation.1q. Remember, for VLANs, um, there were Cisco had a, an early uh, protocol. Um, I think it was ISL, uh, and that was the one that kind of like then everyone was like, "Oh man, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread." And again, in the early days, this is kind of why Cisco grew so fast and so big, um, because. Uh, they had such great ideas. Well, then um, the IEEE got together and said, hey, we really like this. Um, we're going to make our own kind of based on this. So then they made um, dot .1Q. Uh, so you know, 802.1Q is the standard. And then kind of everybody moved to the standard. So Cisco no longer supports ISL. Um, everybody's kind of using dot .1Q. And that way, everybody's, you can use multiple switches throughout your network. So again, we have to change the encapsulation of dot .1Q to do the VUN tagging in a specific way. And then dot .1Q for VUN 10. IP address, uh, the IP address we're going to assign it. Then we go to the other interface, dot thirty, encapsulation dot one q, uh, inter VLAN thirty. Give him an IP address. Boom. Now we don't do no shutdown on the sub interfaces. We go to the physical interface and do no shutdown. So I create the sub interface. I set the encapsulation. Give it an IP address. Set the sub interface. Set the encapsulation. Give it an IP address. Physical port, no shut. And then we're up. And then if again, if I show VLANs, um, shows up. This is just the, the routing table to show you the sub interfaces and how they would show up. See so here where you get the dot thirties and the dot tens, that kind of thing. So again, it does show up in your routing table. All right. So to verify router on a stick, again, you want to do ping. Uh, the two biggest commands are ping and trace route. Um, so you know you send a ping, which sends you know, the four packets back and forth uh, to make sure you can get to the destination and back. Uh, and then you can use tracer to uh, just to check to make sure the right path is taken, or to make sure you know, to see where the break is in the command. I typically just use trace route and not ping because if I ping and it doesn't work, then I have to go to trace route to find out where the break is. So I typically use trace route first. Remember, it's trace route on a router. 
but on a PC it's trace cert. For some reason Microsoft and Cisco disagree on everything, so they have to use different words for things. Microsoft calls it a physical address, a Cisco calls it a MAC address. Microsoft calls it trace cert, Cisco calls it trace route. All right. So those are our three types of inter-VLAN routing. We have the legacy where we have one port for every interface. We have the router on a stick where we only have one port that we divide up into subports, And then we have the layer three switching. So now we're going to talk about troubleshooting a little bit. So with troubleshooting, um, you know, you want to check out the information. And you want to first you want to make sure that all the ports are set correctly. So we want to make sure that access ports that go to the end user devices are set up for access. So switch port mode access. We want to make sure that we have the, a trunk formed if we're doing router on a stick. So switch port mode trunk. Uh, we want to do show interface. Now here you can do show interface, pick the interf specific interface you're having a problem with and then add the switch port and it'll tell you like what mode it's in. So um, this is static access, um, the encapsulation is dot one q, um, trunking's on, that kind of stuff. Now with a router on a stick one of the a typical issue is we put the wrong number uh, after the, the encapsulation. Remember, after the encapsulation, so encapsulation.1q space a number, that number has to be the VLAN ID. You know, if you put 100 instead of 10, um, I'm going to have a problem because it's going to be looking for the, v, the tag that says 100, not the tag that says 10. So in this case, you could go back into the subinterface and just do encapsulation.1q space 10 um, and overwrite this 100, and then you'd be good. So some other ones, remember show interface will show you a lot of information. Um, show run and then look to see your encapsulations. Um, so here's my interfaces, encapsulation.1q100. So obviously it would show up there. All right, errors with IP addresses. Remember, each VLAN has to be in a different subnet. The PCs on that VLAN all have that different gateway, a default gateway, than the PCs in other VLANs. So it's common for IP address errors, especially with students first starting out um, with this, because you know now you've got five different networks on your on your stuff. Some students don't like to read outside the box, so they just keep punching in numbers. Um, and they're not paying attention. So every PC, whatever VLAN you're in, each VLAN has its own default gateway. Um, so you have to make sure that your IP addressing is set up correctly. Um, because again, each VLAN is in its own subnet. Each subnet has its own specific default gateway. All right, to verify some addressing, remember show IP interface is always a good one. Show running will always help. Um, you, you, then you basically just scroll down to the running. Or you can filter it with the pipe command. Remember, you know, show run pipe, uh, include interfaces. Um, check your subnet IDs to make sure that they're that they match the uh, the VLAN number. All right, so that's about it. So now layer three switching. Basically, remember a layer three switch is a switch that acts as a switch and a router. So it can, it does the functionality of both. And you can set the ports to be routed ports to work as a router, or you can set them to be switch ports to act like a switch. So you can have a 24 port you know layer three switch with 10 router ports and then you know 14 switch ports. Um, however you want to do it. So again, the high performance switches like the the 65,000 stuff um, are pretty common, but typically you see the lower numbers, you know, the 4,500 and below. Now, an interesting thing to remember with um, layer three switches, they don't route like a router does. A router relies on software, the iOS. Um, to make routing decisions. So everything's kind of performed just like your PC. It's kind of done through like micro your PC uses Windows. And Windows kind of makes the decisions and processes everything. And on a router, it's typically software. A layer three switch is a little bit different because a layer three switch um, routes everything through hardware, through integrated circuits. Um, so it actually routes faster uh, than a layer two or I'm sorry, than a regular switch. Alright. So again, um, Make sure you remember, you know, SVIs uh, are, are switch virtual interfaces, um, or I can have routed ports on there. Um, the encapsulation must be correct, so it's got to be 802.1q. Um, remember, Cisco has an older proprietary one, uh, ISL, um, no longer used or supported. All right, so again, the advantages of <coughs> excuse me, multi-layer switch. 
much faster than route around a stick. Again, everything is hardware forwarded um, and routed. Um, no need for external links. A um, lot, lot, lot lower latency. Um, so again, instead of having one switch port with router on a stick that's sharing the bandwidth um, of four VLANs, um, now you can have each VLAN going to its own physical hardware port um, so you can get the full bandwidth. So, and then some, some configuration issues, that things to check, you know, make sure all VLANs are defined on all switches. You know, if I got two switches that are connected together and I have a PC and VLAN 1 uh, on the left switch and a PC and VLAN 1 on the right switch, there's got to be a trunk between them. There's got to be some way to um, access those, those VLANs and the VLAN has to be created on both switches. Um, and then obviously the VLAN has to be allowed on the trunk. Um, so we do. Um, so you have to allow all the VLANs that you want on the trunk. And your port must be assigned in the right VLAN. So again, it gets kind of complicated. And then with your switch ports uh, for the routed ports, you know they have to have the correct IP address, the correct subnet mask. They have to be operational. They have to match the VLAN number. So there's a lot of configuration stuff that you need to pay attention to. So again, not a lot of material here. Uh, but a lot of configuration and a lot of effort needs to go into planning these kind of things. Sometimes it works better if you map this out on paper first uh, before you start working on the lab. All right, so that kind of wraps it up. So basically, remember, there are three to ways to, to enter VLAN route. Um, the old legacy method where we had a router with 12 interfaces and then we had 12 VLANs, so each interface had its own VLAN. Um, router on a stick where we use one VLAN, or sorry, one interface on a router, and we just subdivided it out. Or we have a layer three switch. Um, the layer three switching is faster than either of the other two choices, um, but it's more expensive. Um, enter VLAN routing with dedicated interfaces um, is the second fastest, um, but again, it's very expensive. Remember, those WAN interface cards are anywhere between 400 and up um, per interface. So it can get very expensive when you're, you're talking about adding, you know, six WAN cards, uh, especially if they're like 600 bucks a piece. Um, so it, sometimes it's your budget doesn't allow and you have to do right around a stick. All right, well that about wraps this up. Uh, let's see what's in Angel. All right, in Angel, again, you got the slides. Uh, this is a PDF on Cisco about setting up inter-VLAN routing on a Layer 3 switch. Um, again, we don't do that in class. We don't have any Layer 3 switches here. We just have 2960s, um, so we cannot do that. So again, it's kind of nice to, to see that, that that's there. And then here's a video on setting up router on a stick um, that was pretty good. Um, and again, you will be doing the, the router on a stick um, in class, uh, and you will do it in the Voice over IP class, so you'll get plenty of practice. All right, so that's about it uh, for this week. Uh, again, uh, chapter material is kind of short, uh, but again, a lot of configuration coming your way uh, in these labs. Um, so make sure you're ready. Remember, read the book, write questions down, watch the, the video presentation, write questions down, come to the class day that week, and ask questions. Get your money's worth out of the class. All right, guys, have a good one. We'll see you in lab day.